Hi guys, this episode was recorded late Friday afternoon, and as we addressed in the episode, we were all a little bit tired before starting this episode. As most of you know, as most of you are experiencing, we are all in the midst of exhaustion right now with everything that is going on. But we went ahead and proceeded with the episode. We go through a roller coaster of emotions in this episode, and when we finished recording, Taylor said that was the worst best episode we've ever done. And so that is why I've titled this show, The Worst Best Episode. We decided to leave it as is because you see, we go from talking about Britney Spears to laughing our butts off to answering some pretty serious questions sent in by you. We hope that you hang out for the ride with us and see that we are just human like all of you are. And we too have bad days, hard days, and sometimes laughter is absolutely the best medicine. Because some of the jokes get a little bit dirty in this episode, we would absolutely suggest that if you have small children, maybe they not watch this episode. All right, guys, thank you so much. I hope that you're all doing well, and please sit back, relax, and I hope that you have a laugh and a cry with us. Hello, everybody. I'm back with my girls, Taylor and Stephanie. We're all three a little bit low energy today, guys. You'll probably notice that. It's fine. We're just effing exhausted because this movie is really tiring. So um, I'm sure you guys are all feeling the same way. I've already filmed two other episodes today. I know that Taylor has done her quantum healing today, as well as Stephanie's done some readings already today. So please excuse us if we're a little bit low on our energy. How are you ladies doing? I want to sleep. Like a two, a two week nap. Would suffice a two week nap. <laughs> that would be really good right now. What? what? I'm med bed. Stop. Bring on the med beds. Bring on the med beds. Oh, let's get quantum. Sorry, maybe. I snorted on this video. So, <laughs> <laughs> listen, when I laugh really hard, I snort. The same, it's same. But usually, like, I try. I don't think I've ever done it on a video, but in like my life, life, like I will snort sometimes <laughs> when I laugh. So. I'm at the point in this whole thing, if I make a fool of myself on a video, I really don't care. <laughs> Smile and wave, boys. Smile and wave. That's right. Hey. <laughs> we're human. It's, it's fine. It's fine. But guys, we're going to be getting to some of your questions. It's taken us a while to get through all of your questions, of course, because Taylor and Stephanie do a very thorough job. At least I think you guys do a really thorough job with each person's question. And hopefully we'll finish up the list today. If I do end up missing anybody on the list, please know that it was not intentional. Um, I It's so hard for me to explain. I think Taylor and Stephanie are starting to get this now. Like we have things flying at us constantly, don't we ladies? Constantly. Um, I, I always have like, and never have less than like 10 text messages on my phone. I haven't checked. I'm lucky the other day I was over a hundred, you know? And so I've been to 150, 200, a hundred. And yeah, it's, 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 and so sometimes when we're going through emails, comments, messages, it, it, sometimes we miss things and it's, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, it is not intentional at all. So if we by chance miss your question, then when I post for the next set of questions, just make sure, just re-ask it. Um, in the comment section, because honestly, it's really not intentional at all. We're only each of us in our own houses are only one person trying to, to, to handle a lot of stuff. So, um, so anyway, and again, as always, if you do want to give Taylor and Stephanie a little bit of a tip when we're done, if they answered your question, I'm going to put that information down in the description box below for their Venmos and all that and all that good stuff. Um, of course, you don't have to, but if you do want to, I will put that down for you guys. All right, you ladies, ready? ready you, bleh, I can't even speak. That's how tired I am. I was okay. Born. All right. So you, are you ladies ready to begin? I'm I was ready. born ready. And guess what my song download of the day was? I couldn't wait to share this. You guys ready? Ready. <laughs> you guys will like this. Britney Spears Stronger. Oh, I actually, I like that song yes. actually. Yeah. You know, can I say something? And this might, okay. So I am like a rock and roll girl. Like 
one hundred percent. Like I am like I grew up with my I'm parents. Saying. I know most of these bands are bad, but you know, my parents were teenagers in the seventies. I was born in eighty three. So we grew up with like Led Zeppelin, Rolling mm-hmm. Stones. I've been to all these these concerts. And so the I'm already on the rock and roll girl journey. Well, Journey's more like what prog rock? Would that be would that be prog rock? I don't know. I like Journey and all them, and I don't know. I, right I now, my son Journey is concert. blasting ACDC twenty four seven. ACDC. Oh There's God. a few ACDC I like. Um, I'm actually a huge Aerosmith fan, and I know they're so bad. They're so bad, oh but I do. They're like all bad. Music. They're all but, bad. Um, what can we listen to today? I mean, even the Christian music is all. Oh, of course, it's all naughty. Naughty. It's all. It all of it is. But, I mean, I still listen to it because it's about what you do with it i guess so um you know the energy yeah the energy you put into it if you're moving your body and you're feeling good then like it brings you joy then so so well we'll make whatever i blast my music when i cook and i dance and the two dogs stare at me what is wrong with you mom (laughs) okay so i go from like rock and roll like um i love uh um my mind's going like i can't even think today ladies um but yeah I've actually one of the best concerts I ever went to was Bon Jovi. Oh no God. joke. It was, it was, it was like entertaining because all the ladies, it was in LA. So I lived in LA. It was at the stable center and all the ladies in there had like for that night, hopefully it was just for that night. Hopefully it wasn't like an everyday thing. They had like the Jersey hair from the eighties. Oh, and he like came up with his first song. He was like standing in the audience singing. And then he walked through the audience to get to the stage. And it was like, parting of the sea and all these ladies are like throwing themselves on Bon Jovi. <laughs> I'm sure he's dirty, but anyway. Big hair don't care. Big hair don't care. Yes. Yeah, so, anyway, now that I'm delirious. Uh but yo, no, I well, we're talking about Britney Spears. I actually like I like Britney Spears too. So I have my rock and roll, Britney Spears, and of course I love my Broadway. I started my day off today. These ladies know I had a rough night last night. It's crazy. Um and I got this morning and I listened to thoroughly modern Millie. <sighs> and then I did my my thing so yeah so okay i'm a big historic i listen to lots of soundtrack music so you do and then I, that's my man of faith my man yeah see Bryce. now I'm, i can't we're exhausted um, i do my, there, a lot of my like war fatigue it's like battle fatigue <laughs> i don't know i also i think like our bodies something... have had it yeah and being in the quantum too sometimes words don't do justice to like what you're feeling or what you're getting what like it's like because i see in images so it's like when i see something in my head I can't, I, I can't always translate it. <laughs> dropped a card. You're right back. What's it say? Yeah, what does it say? What did a card what is say? It? Queen of Swords. Oh, yeah, it did say that, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know Queen of Swords is supposed to be like, that's an intellectual, you know, but I'm seeing it as us being a battle like swords, right? Like we, we I see fire. that being like stubborn and just like, rare. like, I don't know, like, We've had it. We've had it. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm tired. I'm. I. What'd you say, Taylor? Poor mission. Shadow self. Like it's like that aspect of yourself that's really like sharp tongued and feisty. That's that's what we're seeing from like everyone right now too. I would like to just affirm from the collective. Yeah. (laughs) I've been cursing a lot today. (laughs) So (laughs) I'm a queen of swords today. Yeah. Um. So I was in seven. I hope you don't mind. I'm going to share the story because we both had the same experience. You sent me a meme of like Will Smith, a picture of Will Smith saying like me before agreeing to come down or whatever. And he's all happy from like the fresh. Then like after being, it shows him all beat up and wrecked. It was a funny meme. I shared it. But you and I both kind of have the same reaction. Why are you showing pictures of Will Smith? It's a freaking joke. Like, yeah, it's a joke. You Seriously. Go, we I, I just relax. can't. We I have can't, to relax. Like, yeah. It's too extreme. We're, Black yeah. and white thinking is a mental disorder. You guys, it's a joke. Laugh at also, it. Also, Will it. Smith uh-huh. looked like garbage in that. So we should just like shout out to him looking like garbage if you're concerned about it. He did look yes. like garbage. Okay. Yes. Yes. People need a hat and we need it. And I'm sorry. And I also posted on my Twitter too this. I found this really funny. Actually, let me just pull it up, you guys, because, <laughs> but then we'll get to your questions because I th- we're just going to have, this is what we do when we're not recording too. So let me just show you guys what I posted. And somebody got all upset. Because apparently I was appropriating like bad they jokes. Got upset, for- they got upset with me too. And I'm just like, it's a, it's a joke. It's, it's a joke. A like, time joke. to lighten up, guys. If you cannot lighten up, you can't go into a positive world. Like, no, exactly. On. Exactly. Yeah. You can't. It just irritates gonna, me. Um, a sense of humor is the highest level of spirituality. And, and if we're going to be, we, 
that is what the left teaches us to do. The left teaches us to, to constantly be canceling people and not have humor. This was the tweet that um, Stephanie sent light workers when they sign up to help humanity's awakening light workers. Now that is literally, <laughs> I feel like that. I we all feel like that. So I'll show you why I things. posted oh. it. Oh, come on. Where is uh, the internet's being slow right now? Cause I'd also like to say too. too, the whole point of getting triggered is for our advancement of our soul. And we have, we have to choose how we respond so we yeah. can get triggered and we can project it onto someone else, or we get triggered and we say, Holy moly, I got to go take a bath. Holy moly, I need to take some time to myself. It's how you choose to respond. We're all going to get triggered. We're all going to be upset right now, okay? Like, we're all feeling it. Like, Stephanie just pulled initiation by water. That's in a very emotional purging. <laughs> what am I reading? Hold on. Oh, so Wait, I'm going to like this, too. So I found this because I love humor, guys. I really do like to laugh a lot. And I find things really funny. And so I was reading through these tweets. And kids crack, crack me up the most. Like, kids are so funny. And somebody posted this. My nine-year-old nephew, hey, smell this, you lick a puss. Me, mutes TV, what? Nine-year-old nephew, it's so good, smell it, you lick a puss. Me, <laughs> nine-year-old nephew, <laughs> hands in the jar. Me, oh it's pronounced eucalyptus. <laughs> I like that, laughed so hard because can you not imagine that happening? Like, I could totally see that. That is so funny. And like, it's harmless, it's harmless. Like, and I shared it and somebody commented, I'm not even gonna read the comment, it was like, you're perpetuating the degradation of women, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, holy hell, this okay. is hysterical. Go join the, go join the fundamentalists because yeah, I, or the I, I have so the no tolerance do for this that. And so I even shared like my, um, that was me tripping over rocks in India and flip flops. Um, uh, <laughs> there's my mama. Uh, and oh, so that's, oh, that's Ravi. When Ravi was a baby, he's oh, to Ravi boy. he would ride like that in the car. Um, I shared a tweet. I was going through like these old pictures I had and I found this uh, picture or this, this text message my sister had sent me. Oh, come on. Um, okay. So I, so this text message is five years old. I saved it for a reason. Aunt life is the best life. And I can't wait to show this message to my niece's future boyfriend when she's a teenager. My sister had texted me one day. Are you available to talk? Jacqueline pooped to the potty and she wants to tell someone. That's I cute. remember that day. And the Aww. funny thing is, is Todd was with me that day. And when I FaceTimed her so she could tell me about her pooping in the potty, she did not want to tell me. She wanted to tell Todd. Oh. And all I could hear on the phone was, I poop a potty, Todd. I poop a potty, Todd. <laughs> I poop a oh, potty, Lord. Todd. <laughs> I, I just like to say the thing about Twitter too is I was back in this game a long time ago posting on Twitter about how I felt about things. I got nuked off Twitter like two years ago and I quit. I was like, screw this, man. You guys going to nuke me over that? Not well, that's cool. the thing too is I know like people expect on my Twitter to uh, constantly be dropping like truth stuff. Yeah. But that's not, that's not my whole day, guys. Like I'm still a human being. I'm still living my life. Like, yes, I were posting about true stuff, but I also like really funny shit too. You yeah, know, man. and so, and so I always want to maintain that sense of humor. And so we, we have to, I, I mean, yeah. If you don't like what somebody posts though, then don't, don't follow, follow them. them. Yeah, yeah, don't exactly. watch it. Don't, yeah, don't yeah, like I'm, it. It's okay. I'm and that's post, a big responsibility to, to put on them. Like that's a, like, I mean, like that's a big responsibility to put on people that they're messing yeah. with women's stuff or they're whatever, or they're perpetuating something. That's a really big pressure to put on someone. Don't yeah. And it's on. funny that nine-year-old kid that was saying that had no idea what he was saying. Yeah. He was just it's trying, funny as hell it's though. Funny. Yeah. Oh my it's God. It's hard to say. I feel that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's hard to say. I thought I was reading. I was like, God, I don't want to say this right. <laughs> we, we guys, we need to lighten up. People Light, need yes. to lighten up. Yeah, it's okay That's to laugh. Ridiculous. Shake it okay up. To laugh. It's gonna be Shake okay, it guys. It's gonna Shake be okay. Fingers. This is our dance, right? Our sexy dance. It's so sexy. <laughs> Gosh, sexy. you guys look so sexy all of a sudden. How did you do I that? Like, I feel like. <laughs> like I'm yeah, and I ain't no sexy today. I'm just like, I'm just like, I'm. Sorry. Yeah, it's snowing out. The hat's going on. <sighs> I'm cold. I don't feel like doing the hair. Nor do I care what I look like on camera anymore. <laughs> oh, no, well, it's okay. I'm just you happy. go, be. <laughs> listen, listen, so I, uh, I'm not going to say everything that happened to me, but like last night was rough. I woke up early because I get up early every morning and I was having a little like rock bottom moment. Come to Jesus. I listened to my Broadway. I listened thoroughly about a Millie. Mill I may have danced around a little bit thinking I'm a tap, tap dancer on Broadway or something. Then I did. I did. I did. My, I did bar this morning. So I, that felt good. And then I 
took a shower, shaved my legs and everything I do, put my makeup on been filming and I feel like crap again. So it is, it is a grieving process. I think we're in a huge grieving process. And I think too, I think a lot of people know that their life's about to change as well, like drastically change. And even though we know it's for the better, I think there is like a mourning period of losing what you've known, right? There is a bit of a mourning period when it comes to losing the matrix, even though we don't want it anymore. We know it's bad, but it's all we know. You know, how many times have we sat on camera and I'm eating Cheetos and I keep saying to you guys, I'm just going to enjoy these until we can't enjoy them anymore. Yeah. I do that right. with coffee. Like I used to be so strict yeah. on myself, but I like, I was like, no, if I need to order a cup of coffee to just boost my day just a little bit, it's, it's okay. But yeah. It's, it's, you know, what would boost my day moving to Florida. You can come, come get on the money. Come get me somebody. Yes. I want to move to Florida too. You I'm know what would make Florida. my day? Moving, I shouldn't say this, moving to another planet. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I like it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. You know, Earth is too hard. Like it it changes. Earth is yeah, way I too can't hard. take the cold anymore. I can't stand the Northeast, according to that lovely little map. You at Babylon. Looking Babylon. Get Babylon. me out of here. <laughs> according to that little map, Taylor and I are in Egypt. Yeah, I like it here. I like Egypt, Egypt too. It. That's why I want to come join you down in Egypt. Well, come come on, this Egypt. Is interesting. So, oh, Egyptian so, party. You guys know, like um, on Tuesdays now we're doing the Magdalene series and I actually just recorded um, the second part that's going to be airing on Tuesday. I'm sorry, guys. I get emotional in it. it. It's, it's all about love and I just like lose it at the end. So you'll have to forgive me. I'm like sobbing through it. But um, at the beginning though, she talks about like where obviously where the gospel was found, which we know Cairo, Egypt. Oh, oh my God! For real, I flew out of my deck as you said, love. Wow, it's all about twin flames. I mean, she's talking. She doesn't use the term twin flames, and it's she kind of goes between um, the girl writing the book. Like she goes between the self love, but then also back to the magic that um, you know Mary the Magdalene was was the one that loved the Christ the most. You know, and and that because they 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 were twins. They were both the Christ. They loved each other the most. And so I started getting emotional reading this, but then I was thinking like, well, shit, like we have this story of where these, these, um, texts were found like Nag Hammadi, Cairo, the Dead Sea, but now we're not so sure mm. that that those locations are actually those locations. Right. So how did they end up there? We're, it's too much. It's too much. Like this, this stuff's too, it's, it just, I, I'm just not even going to think about it until we have more evidence and proof as to what actually happened. Yeah. What's difficult is when you get that, and I'm not going to go into details ladies, so don't worry, but when you get downloads of like future stuff and it's like promised to you and promised to you and promised to you, nothing happens. Yeah. Through the downloads and through your divination and through speaking with God and everything like that. And it becomes like, become sick yeah it's a grieving problem like, we're grieving i think it's a lot of us i think a lot of us are grieving you know what why don't we kick that off today with um that question so how do i phrase this then so i don't know if we've asked on air about the geography but i know we've we've talked about it we've tried to figure out the true geography of, of everything and what we got is basically the map that we have of the americas is legit right that's kind of what we got like we we're not we don't they're not telling us where everything actually happened mm -hmm. okay so if that's the case if um if the middle east egypt that we know that we've been taught where that is isn't the true location of these stories then how did these missing manuscripts end up there is that it? Okay. That's question. an interesting question. Okay. All right. What do we got? They're probably going to give us the moon card and be like, not now. Well, All right. That's interesting. You. How do you that? That? I feel like I just got a hit, but I also just want to say, I hope that people watch this. Like we're not trying to be down. We're just trying to be honest that we are also spiritual beings having a human experience. And we are feeling all of these things that the collective is feeling too. And sometimes like, you have to shake it off, but also sometimes talking about it really does help shift the energy too. So yeah. here we are in this now moment, we told you what's going on and now we get to shift it and play with cards, which is one of my favorite things to do. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> and by the way, yeah. we're making that a t-shirt. We're making that a t-shirt. I'm a high dimensional being 
with high dimensional needs. Yes. And I also want <laughs> to um, talk tarot to me. That's what Taylor said in a text message. What did you say? Oh, love it when you talk tarot to me. Yeah, was, you guys, y'all well, be. One night I was like... talking all tarot. I'm like, I want my, I want to, I want to be the four of wands with the three of cups with you guys. Okay. Which is celebration, partying, you know, like just hanging out with my friends. And um, instead of being, what did I say? Like a seven of swords or something. And she's like, talk to me. Tarot to me. I love it when you talk tarot to me. <laughs> when you talk tarot to me. It's like a language. <laughs> <laughs> it is a language. It is a language. That's got to oh, be yes. a t-shirt too. So um, sh shout out to Lori for those shirts. <laughs> yeah, she's amazing. I just like to say, like at this point, question everything. Everything has been manipulated. So obviously that's an affirmation in the here now that that has been manipulated. But I also think maybe they're even lying about the locations. So I normally don't read in reverse, but this is my only card sitting in reverse. And this is knowledge and intellect. And it's like, we get so stuck in our ways of believing things are a certain way or believing things happen this way. And with this coming in reverse, it's almost for me feeling like, did they move those? Did they actually find those there? It just makes me question like everything too. I do so, believe a hundred, like a setup. I, I don't yeah. know why I'm hearing so this. Let me ask. So the gospel of Mary Magdalene was first discovered in our modern times in 1896. Can you guys ask one of your boards to give us the location of where that gospel was discovered? The location in, in that we would know, like, like modern day location. modern day town like where would that be where was it actually discovered mary magdalene's gospel was found 1896 because none of us were alive in 1896 to be there so that's fascinating thought it's so funny we're always connecting like i, I it's like and okay how, what is this saying? is weird yeah uh-oh i think i know what you're gonna say and i don't want to say it out loud <laughs> I don't know if I should say it out loud. Can you give me the continent? What's the continent? Hey, that's better. Where we are. America. In particular, where one of you two live. Atlanta. Oh, Georgia. Because of Atlanta. Atlanta. Are you yeah. I, I, I don't know if that's accurate. God could be messing with us right now. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's spelled out Georgia. Like, as in, George, not Georgia, not the country. And you, you. Let, let me ask like, again. Ask which continent. What continent was Mary Magdalene's gospel located? Now to the audience, you will know by the look on my face what the answer is. Your <laughs> bad lady's <laughs> Okay, yeah, that makes sense to me because we know that this is Egypt. Mm. And we know that Atlanta has the name Atlanta because Atlanta. Yeah, it's definitely in America. So the Gospel of Mary was found here because Mary was Egyptian. Actually, she wasn't. She let was me just ask, let me double check. Was the Gospel of Mary Magdalene found in America? Okay, and was it found in Georgia? There you go, yeah. Did the person who, when they found the gospel, did they remove that person from the earth plane who found it and then they relocated it to what we call Egypt? Well, when I did my spread, first of all, these were two of the cards. So talks about the six of pentacles with the nine of swords. I feel like somebody was working for moving it. Stepping it away from... From its actual location. Yeah. And very quickly, too, in that case. And I feel like its original form, we got the lovers and the four of swords, and I feel like it was after they were deceased, meaning the person who created it or wrote... Well, it was Mary Magdalene's writing. So I wonder if this was after uh, Jesus and Mary were... Um, removed off the earth and we know that their backstories are all completely uh, so basically I've, I've addressed this in my um i think i talked about it in part one i know i addressed it a little bit in part two there's a lot about mary magdalene's story that is that we've been told that's just complete bullshit yeah, that makes um sense. just complete she was not from magdala like that's bs 
we don't know what Magdalene means. I put, I put on that, my community tab, um, what people thought I got some really awesome, um, awesome responses from people about figuring out what, what Magdalene means because it's not Magdala. We know that she was not, she was uh, fair haired, fair eyed, uh, fair skinned. It was not Middle Eastern looking. We know she, uh, through her father, who we think her father was, that she was Greek, what half Greek, half French, or what would be French. We don't know what Gaul. Um, Definitely Greek. Yeah. So, um, so, so she, she's her story, her family, Mary Magdalene. Mm. Now we, they do tell us that she came from a wealthy family, but um, they don't tell us how pa- she came from a powerful family, powerful through both her mother and her father. So um, we, I, even in the second part I just filmed today, uh, it talks about, you know, in the book of Luke, it talks about her getting basically exercised of seven demons. We know that story is complete bunk. Um, she was attacked by seven men. R-A-P-E. That, that's the one to do. And they wanted her because of her light. They wanted to take that essence from her. Mm-hmm. That's the real story, guys. She wasn't, there was no exorcism that happened to her. She, th- that did not happen. She was attacked by f- both physically and spiritually. And a lot of people watching have had spiritual attacks as well. So take that into consideration. This was a very powerful woman. The Magdalene, who came from very powerful parents, uh, both both her mother and Jesus's mother, her mother-in-law, because yes, they were twin flames, they were married, were of the priestesshood of Isis. Mm-hmm. All right. So, and then of course, this also goes back to Atlantis, which I've talked about before. She carried the Atlantean bloodline. So the fact that her gospel might not be where they tell us it was located, everything <laughs> else is a lie. So why not that be a lie too? <laughs> Plot twist. Was it what Catherine and I always say? The more the more we learn, the less we know. So, that's that's very true. Very very nice. very, very, true. very true. We just have to go into this new world with open eyes and a relaxed mind because nothing they have told us is the truth, especially the church. I think the church mm-hmm. is worst of all because the church yeah. has no obligation to tell us the truth. Mm, yeah, and it just goes back to like I'm so happy. I always had a heart. Like I remember the church harping on me for memorizing scripture and I just couldn't like, yeah, like we got to, got to to read your Bible this much per day and pray this much per day. And this, this, this and that. And I used to like get down on myself because, and I used to put on a good act in church. I'll, I'll admit it. I used to put on a really good act so I could fit in with the churchies, you know, um, (laughs) <laughs> the church churches. I just came up with that. <laughs> the church. No, I I like would put up like and the only reason why I put on a good act is because I wanted to be on the damn worship team. I just what's wanted the, to be on worship. The worship team. team. It's like the band that plays in anyway. the church. Because oh, you want to be like, you want to be the church rock star. Yeah, you want to be the Bon Jovi no, of your church. Not so I look like the best person in the world. And like it wasn't to be like a rock star. I just you music love music is my life. Like mm-hmm. I'm a musician, I'm a singer and music's my life. So I, that's what I wanted. And I wanted to do that for Christ. So yeah. And they all rejected me. Oh, you're, you're, you're living in sin and you're not right. <laughs> like I was never good enough. And it's so weird how God took me out of church after the first time I was on worship team. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I waited 15 years. And then he's like, yeah, you're not, you're not going back to church. Oh anymore. man. See, that's I'm like, I, I, last time I went to church was when I was 17 years old. So I stopped going to church at that point. So it's been 21 years now since I have gone to church. Yeah. And the only times I ever set foot in church now is for a funeral. So <laughs> um, the last funeral I went to and I had to sit through the Baptist church ceremony. I was like, they were talking about the book of revelations. How is the end days? And I'm like, cause this is a great thing to bring up during a funeral. Number one, number two, I'm sitting there like, yeah, you're not reading that right. Like, dude, you're no. so, we've already been through the apocalypse, my friend. Like just do a little bit of research. Apocalypse happened we're in post-apocalyptic right now and that's mm-hmm. exciting because that means we're gonna ascend yeah, well, it's yeah. Like this one ironic you know how many pastors are like you're not rapture ready and i'm sitting here now and i'm like 
dude, I already raptured. You did. <laughs> we already. This is like the. Like, how many times have I done it. this? Jeez. <laughs> when is enough enough? How many times have I been through this now? Like we're we're that's good. Why it's a vol- that's why it's a volunteer thing, and it's interesting. You guys are talking about the church too, because that's such a perfect example of like judgment too. Like they 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 say oh okay you right. can't make this up you can't make this up and with the knight of pentacles yeah uh, and and it's funny because i feel like that's what we need to shift to now too is like well you did something negative to me only only god can ju- i know that's like a cheesy thing no that but we've been talking say. about that yeah about the yeah. whole like you know especially with like spell casting and stuff if you get uh, get attacked you cannot send it back. You got to send it to God and let him deal with it. Vengeance mm-hmm. is mine, saith the Lord. Where is that? That's in the Bible, right? Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I guess. I like when you guys talk Bible verse to me. I'm just like, I don't Bible. know that one. Do you want to know my favorite one? It's something about lifting you up like wings of an eagle. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I, that's that liberation energy. That's mood. That's mood. And well, the other thing I was, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord is basically God saying karma's mine bitch and i'm gonna pay so make free will great again make free will that's what I'm that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make free will great again oh my heart is so bad the All last right. time i had a, an experience in a church well um my most recent was when my grandfather died and the pastor had four entities attached to him and of course i can see so it's like my mom just loved this pastor just loved him and i looked him in the eyes because I'd be like this. I looked him in the eyes and I was like, thank you for taking your time. Like, you know, to help my mom with, with my grandfather. And he couldn't look me in the eyes because he knew I could see what was around him. I don't know. They were feeding him. They will not look me in the eyes either. They don't look at me. <laughs> no, it's very, very odd because I swear there are certain spiritual entities that will not look at me because mm-hmm. um, they know I'll see right through the BS because I'm great at that. And um, I, I, I let them know with my facial expressions that yeah, you're full of shit. <laughs> well, I mean, even the, the the church I grew up in, like at one point we had a youth pastor there that like got in trouble with some kitty stuff and like uh-huh. deep backs got involved. And you know what happened? They just moved into another church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, judgment card. Judgment card again. Coming up again. I'm gonna speak tarot. Talk tarot to me, baby. Talk tarot to me. Okay, judgment card with the wheel of fortune along with the devil card so the the devil has been on the upside of the wheel he's about to go on the downside of the wheel that's right goodbye devil i have a feeling my story is not uncommon all right it's it's not it's not y'all want to get ready we all do some of these questions let's do let's go let's do it so this is from neckbone and i actually really like this question hello beautiful ladies thank you don't feel so beautiful today, neck phone, but I appreciate it. My question, <laughs> Greek gods, good guys, bad guys, a mix. Now, before we get into this, I did a whole deep dive into Mardi Gras because in my New Orleans series, which is still ongoing, by the way, guys, it's just been crazy. So I haven't dropped an- another episode as of late because it's been crazy. But um, I did a deep dive into Mardi Gras because I wanted to know what all these holidays really are about. And um, so Mardi Gras is big in New Orleans. Um we don't celebrate it here in Georgia, or at least my family doesn't, but that was big with from the French descent, even though I do have one ancestor that came through New Orleans, um, got a little French in me from both sides, actually, in my family. But um, it's supposed to be a celebration <laughs> where I'm tired, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to cut this out. I can't breathe. I literally can't breathe right now. I can't breathe. I didn't mean to say it that way. <laughs> That's the funniest thing that happened. I didn't mean to say it that way. <laughs> you're going to have to cut that one out. Yeah, you're going to have to cut that out. Well, I'm sweating. Okay, guys, hey, I was cold. Okay, we're going to get back on camera. They're going to see her crying. I did not mean to say it that way, guys. I was like, holy oh hell. God. Oh my God. I would just start oh, it. Sorry. Like- I did not mean it. I have not had a little bit of French in me, guys. I- so- <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm, sweating. Just- I'm turning red. Oh, God. 
<laughs> just start it. You're like Frenchie and sisters, but don't say it. Don't do it again. I can't handle it. It's so funny. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's funnier. <laughs> you are freaking laughing. I don't know. Maybe I'll just leave this in to show up and what, what life is really like with us. I didn't mean to say it that way. I mean, it was so funny. <laughs> I didn't mean to say it that way, guys. I, I, okay, I, boo. In my DNA, in my skin, boo. in my blood, I got some friends. Because I was trying to, I don't know. Where did Stephanie go? right now okay i did i really don't need to say it that way and i'm so okay. tired i didn't even notice when i was okay so mardi gras i think you should leave yeah, that mardi gras. <laughs> mardi gras you know where you lift your shirt up and you get your, your beads <laughs> um composure yeah. Um, okay, well, oh, Dionysus. It's the celebration of Dionysus. <laughs> who, um, if you look at pictures of Dionysus, he was a giant. He was a Nephilim. I'll, I'll link the video down below. You guys can What's watch it if you want. So, so Greek, he was, no. <laughs> I'm I couldn't, I couldn't handle a giant, guys. I couldn't. I'm dead. I would break. <laughs> so. Oh my god, I'm having the best day. Thank you guys. <laughs> oh my god. I need a med bed. <laughs> med bed. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, Bryce, that was so funny. Um, okay, all right. It's so all that, good, so this is a question. Thank you, Nick. The question <laughs> was: Are the Greek gods good or bad guys? I think some of them are Nephilim, but that's just my personal opinion from my. So we're asking stuff. about the Greek gods. The Greek yeah. gods, yes. Like so, Dionysus. Yeah, for me, um, with Greek gods, it's interesting because they were calling them gods and goddesses. But for me, that never really resonated because we shouldn't be calling anyone god or goddess. Yeah. But what I think they were is they were powerful beings. And actually, one of my downloads that I got not too long ago was very galactic or higher dimensional that may have came down to assist. I actually do agree with Bryce, though. There were definitely negative aspects of these Dionysus gods. Yeah. Yeah. Some of these, some of these Greek gods were conceived the way that they tell us Yasha was, was conceived, mm -hmm. which is through sex magic. Now, again, there is sex magic, positive and negative, like, but cause sex can be a very magical, beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> Sorry guys. Also though, like with the sex magic thing that I can't even think right now. I've literally had so much information coming through and I can't even think anymore. We're like, we're like 14 year old boys uh, right now. Wow. Oh, that's that's wrong. This is, this is not smooth. We suck today. <laughs> this is, this is, we're 14 year old boys. This is just, I'm sorry. Oh, that was yeah, hilarious. And the God thing is really oh. important to me. So that's so funny that this is happening. So like Dionysus was conceived through like, a, secu a succubus or an incubus like what they want us to believe mary they want us to believe that the virgin mary was like like a had relations yeah. with a spirit which is a, a succubus or an incubus when she had relations with joseph like that's just that's yeah. the holy that's holy <laughs> consenting human being <laughs> but but i i get what I you're saying save myself today it's okay it's fine i'd rather have fun anyways but I was just going to say, too, one of, the, one of the things, too, is, like, I know you guys haven't seen Harry Potter to the extent I have. Like, I literally watched every night. Voldemort, Voldemort's evil, and he was conceived under a love spell potion, okay? So let's just make right. that clear. Right. <laughs> so right. that was my not good information. Thoughts. Oh, wow. Never oh. mind. That's pretty good information. So Nephilim. Nephilim. We'll, look, we'll also look, too, with the Justice card, too, some of those beings may have reincarnated to balance things out or to balance themselves out. They may have had to pay karma themselves. Just because they're higher dimensional beings doesn't yeah. mean that they can... I mean, that's I'm we're looking at that more situation. Charges. Oh, cool. yeah. oh, it looks like they had to make agreements. Uh, yeah, that's what forward. I was oh, look at... And I pulled that at the same time. So you are absolutely spot on with what you said, that, uh, Taylor? Yeah. I can't even say anybody's name correctly. It's okay. So blah, we're blah. going. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah, that's what I kind of got from my research was that they were the, actually the Nephilim. 
Mm -hmm. um and the nephilim you guys they were giants but not all giants were nephilim so i just want to make that oh an orvis mm -hmm. that was a big boy was a big one. oh um, my god that was the biggest orb i've ever seen the <laughs> orb it just <laughs> took over the whole camera the whole camera it looked good been going around mm -hmm. me like crazy like Edge. crazy i've been i've been seeing it on all my cameras all my you know come on let's just let's just drop that veil guys let's just keep moving because i'm yeah. tired i'm Losing my mind. I'm really <laughs> giggly when I'm tired. Very giggly, yes. We like what do they call it? when kids when kids are tired? They call it slap happy. <laughs> yeah, I, I I laugh at every little thing when I'm really tired. So sorry, that especially I'm sex too. jokes because we're like fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> You're so immature. <laughs> I've never laughed like that in like years. So thank you though. Cause I know, actually funny. I appreciate that because I was having a really rough day. These ladies go. Wow, that really alchemized day, my so. entire life. Like literally my life just got cleansed and it alchemized <laughs> everything. I'm good now. Let's go. What's next? Come on. All but right. I, I okay, said, next question. My well, I do agree with you guys in though. Elementary school was laugh attack girl. Okay, so you put oh, that, you know. Let's laugh attack. All right. Uh, Mo yeah. Smiths wants to know who is Melania? Was Melania? Yeah. Melania? I think I, I think like, I think we have to also understand that, like we say this, we say like, we want to be very clear. This isn't a movie because we play like a role in this, but there are like our lives do. And obviously when we say it's a movie, we lose track of like how hard this has been for all of us. But there's also another aspect to that, that not everyone is as they seem too. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just, yeah, because I think she might be somebody else, but um, I think sure. that too. We're talking about Melania, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mrs. Yeah. T. I'm talking about Mrs. T. Yeah, I, I have my my. I have my suspicions. My suspicions, but I'm gonna tread very carefully on how I even say this because just in case. Oh, by the way, East Coast time is four four four. I just had to put that out there. <laughs> Doing the dab. I'm gonna make that great again. Oh wow! Making dabbing great again. Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> I wonder if she's gonna be a part of um, like whoever's, whoever Melania is. Okay, I know you guys understand what I'm saying to an extent. Whatever Melania is, that might be a part of the information that comes forward because yeah. she's. Oh my gosh! I'm trying to be so careful. Someone yeah. who may have left the earth plane, but is on the earth plane. Can I? I think people know who we're talking about because I think this is a huge theory that's going around. But she's definitely somebody in authority. That's for sure. So, yeah. like, literally, so pentacles are earth, you know, pentacles are physical. So I'm getting a physical queen. I'm not going to go past that at all with sure. names or anything like that. But she definitely holds a lot of power. And in a victorious way. Oh, wow. And then I did get a full card. So it's not yeah. what you think. Yeah, and it's going to change, right? Yeah, it'll shift. Well, Bryce, you actually, that was my next comment, is the shifting of it, right? Okay, so there's something else that I'm feeling from the energy that she actually is, not the portrayal. There's a Pleiadian lineage there. I do think that. Oh, yeah. I just would like to say that. So as an off-worlder to off-worlder, I feel there's something with the person that is Palladian. Okay. Whoever Melania is, though, is a beautiful being oh, okay. of light. So um, we have a question here. Um, this is an interesting question. So what happens to the children of the parents who go to the spa? We never hear about it, a.k.a. the Kardashian kids, Sasha and mm -hmm. how do you say the youngest one? Malia, um, the royal kids, all that kind of stuff. Uh, what happens to those kids? What do you what will the cards tell us about what's going to happen to the children who are not um, old enough to be accountable for anything they've been exposed to or have been forced to do? Well, one good thing question. that like, hit, hit me, that is a really good question. One thing that hit me when that was being spoke of is the fact that we're not now all realizing that we have soul family and off world family versus our karmic family. These kids don't have to, if, if they've been under control and it's been really negative for them, they don't, they don't owe anything. Like it's not their fault. So they'll be healed, taken care of. And someone from their soul family will come forward and assist with them. I know that for a fact. 
I know a lot of kids are going to be getting adopted. I know a lot of people already feel that they're going to be adopting. So good way to that's yes. So that, that energy of that soul family that we're starting to all really see and feel with each other, that will take care of that situation. I got some really interesting cards. Yeah, bring it on. So I feel like they were removed rather quickly with the chariot card. Yeah. Five of Pentacles. It was very, very difficult for these children, um, but it's a very temporary thing. I actually, personally, I think they got med bed treatment, if you want to know my honest opinion. Um, and then I did get the Justice card with the Sun card. So it kind of goes hand in hand to what you're saying, Taylor, about like soul families. Because to me, it's like a son is the soul family because that's who you relate to the most. That's you souls recognizing each other. Um, and I think you will balance them out, <clears throat> whatever that looks like. Um, and like you said, that med bed, that could also be that justice energy you're seeing too with the balancing out, removing the traumas. Oh, yeah. I feel like this is talking about the collective, though, that knows about this. Like, don't worry. They'll yeah. be taken care of. Yeah. Isn't That's that what I got from that? Because I, I thought about it that as well, especially about, mm -hmm. like, the royal kids and, like, you know, these babies we see that are in these families. And, and I, I saw a comment once on a video that really pissed me off. Basically, that anybody of these bloodlines needs to just be executed, which I'm of the, that bloodline, that royal family. But we all have, we all of us. Listen, if you think your family is clean, oh, keep yeah. digging. Hot twist. Keep digging. You we yeah. all have we all have some Freemasonry in our family lines or cabal activity in our family lines. None of us have ancestors that were perfect. So you cannot you if you think that you can judge someone based on who their freaking parents are, then you're not ready to ascend, my friends. It's their choices. It's our choice yes. to shift that energy, alchemize that energy and break lineages, break chains from our ancestors. And half the, like every time I have a session, half the reason they incarnated into a really difficult family or a really toxic family or anything, it's because it's because they had to clear that. So, yes. Yeah, so I think it's great that we're at this point in our timeline that, that people are actually, you know, we have, I, I just said, we have part of these people that think that anybody that is of these families should be removed, but they obviously don't understand free will and that we're not our bodies. Um, but that so many people are actually concerned about the children who are victims. Oh, Stephanie, I think you froze. Oh, they were right, right. Victims of I this, um, of this, uh, of this cult, as far as like being born into it, like, I, when, when we first started waking up, I was actually very worried about the Royal children, like constantly was thinking about them, constantly looking at pictures of them thinking, Oh my God, these are babies. Yeah. And knowing what they're going through. I, and they're not accountable when you're five, six, seven years old, you're not accountable. Mm -hmm. You're not accountable to what's being done to you, what you're being forced to do. So, um, I, I love that those cards said that they were picked up really, really quickly and then take and healed it. quickly too. I think like what Steph was saying, I, I believe that too. They don't want those kids in any more pain than they've already been. in, And that was the first priority. Like whenever the galactic information started coming in, like I felt like that was the first priority was rescue, rescue, heal, heal as it, as it should be. Right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this next question is from Sophia Rosa. I hope I'm saying your name right, Sophia. Hello, beautiful souls. Why do I, ha I have Tourette's syndrome? Is there an, an energetic issue? I've been dealing with it since I was little. I'm so tired of this. Please help. Um, That's a rough one to live with. I've, yeah. I've witnessed it. I, I think a lot of that kind of stuff, before I even pull cards on it, this just came to me. Um, it goes hand in hand with other things like autism and ADHD and stuff like that. You come from a higher dimension and the way of communication in your dimension was different and you're having a hard time adjusting to the third density polarization on earth with your form of communication. I think going forward, it's automatically going to be healed because you'll be able to calibrate your body to the fourth density positive. That's just what I saw. Anyhow. And would Tourette's have to do with the throat though, with like the throat chakra? <sighs> it There's something, It's I think it's neurological. I don't think it's actually like the throat itself is definitely neurological. Um, just like any neurological illnesses, like uh, autism and stuff like that, or uh, dyslexia stuff, you know, it's, it's um, to do with communication, um, but it's not necessarily the throat. It's the nerves. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and there's something I've seen this before. So 
the way that uh, your higher dimensional self, because you are a high dimensional being and there's a reason you have this, it's like your nerve path is different than other people's nerve path. And here we would be like, oh my gosh, we feel like there's something wrong with us. But obviously that's a very difficult thing to live with. But the frequency has that frequency changes. I literally got eight of, eight of water, which is eight of cups. That's walking away. This, this energy won't, it's almost like the pathway will become easier to access. That's what I kind of saw, like whatever pathway the nerves are going down, it's going to be easier to access. This is a hundred percent something that's going to be healed. Like nine of cups is also wish fulfillment. So it's really fascinating. We have a lot of water energy. So I wonder if this has been also a very emotional thing for, for her too. I um, bet. I can't imagine yeah. not being. Yeah. I, I can only imagine it'd be very emotional, but actually you're coming out of the hangman energy. So I feel like this is sooner rather than later. So that's exciting. So just <laughs> keep holding. It's almost like keep holding in your knowing that you're different for a good reason. Right. And keep holding your knowing that that'll shift and it's, it's not going to look exactly the same. Like nothing's going to look the same, including, including that. Yeah. Definitely in a yeah. shift. They get the tower and the world card together. Yeah. So it's, it, it is going to shift. Um, and I also feel like I have the Prince of Swords right here with the, the um, Ace of Pentacles. It's like you're physically going to be healed and you'll be able to communicate a lot better going forward with that card. And this is saying, do not worry. It, it is going to shift. It's going to get better. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. I'm so happy. All right. So Sandy Lee has a question. She is, well, it's multiple questions. What is her soul mission in this life? What planet is her soul from? from and is her current boyfriend her twin flame oh oh so it's a triple let's go girl so, what was the first question she asked what's her soul mission mission her soul mission okay and what's your name again this is sandy lee and sandy lee just remember that you're about to walk into a big new mission okay so i have to say that for people i have to be like just know your next mission is going to look a little different than your earth missions. Okay. And I'm hearing earth mission. Cause I feel like you might have some off planet work to do. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry. Just saying, Oh boy. All right. And then where and what collective is she from? And oh, I feel like she's going to assist in the uh, confusion spiritual realm, the spiritual world, meaning like those with, okay. I feel like maybe, it's kind of like how I'm, I do the groups with the church, you know, mm -hmm. uh, people who were roped in, in the church like I was. Um, not necessarily uh, organized religion, but I feel like spiritually uh, assisting with confusion. So that could be healing too. But I feel like right now, though, it's kind of like blocked. Like she can't know exactly what yet. Um, but it's something that's going to bring her pure joy and happiness and balance. Oh, look at that. Family and, card. Um, yeah. I feel like she's very spiritual. I think that's why I got the temperance card. Is that the, no, that's no, we, we don't want the seven of cups. That's confusing. <laughs> Where, where's my temperance card? It's somewhere here, but um, yeah, the temperance card is somebody who's spiritual, who's very tapped into the spiritual realm. But I feel like, yeah, it could be like assisting kind of like how much, I'm helping people that were in the organized religion, kind of clearing up that confusion, maybe um, with the programming, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that either. It could just be something where she spiritually also assists people that are in confusion. You could take that both ways, but not all, not all of this come online yet with that two of swords though. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to be blocked for a little bit. Just, just bear with it while it's blocked. Well, I got it that you are actually here on this earth for spiritual service. This really, really mirrors the temperance card. Um, that, that stuff was getting the temperance energy too, which is healing, but I actually feel like it's something you've done in many lives before. And again, there's that joy right there, but it feels like it's something with like teaching healing to people. You definitely have the off world experience too, to do it. Like, and, and it's like <laughs> very ancient soul energy. It's like in your blood and your bones that you're a healer. And I feel like you're going to be teaching. I feel like it has something to do. I'm getting a lot of energy of like physical hands-on teaching and healing. So you might have to, like, you might be helping those people that are confused and then teaching them how to heal others. And it's like a perpetual cycle of passing that down, but it's like, it's very physical. It's going to come to fruition very, very soon here. Yeah, absolutely. But thank you for incarnating on this earth. Dang. <laughs> what was the second question she had, Bryce? Again, Where yeah. is she from? What's, what planet is she from? That might be a pendulum board type of 
Many, many, um, many, many star systems. If we look at it, I want her to know that she's from many star systems. And the one that resonates with her the most is the most recent one she's incarnated on. And I'm hearing the Pleiades, but there's older, there's older. Is that another one too, Liren? No, Venus. Venusian? That's probably where I'm picking up. I picked up when I did her reading with the last question, I was picking up a love frequency, like, Big heart chakra, light up, um, very, very loving, which is where that temperance card came from. So like when I was channeling, I just really felt like her heart center is very big and open and, and healing. Um, so that would make sense. Um, I just had my board spell out Venus. So um, I guess like if we got the lover's card in a spread, that would definitely be Venusian type of energy. Do y'all know what <clears throat> Venus, they don't have thumbs. I found that out. Really? find that very wild what am i gonna do without my thumb i know <laughs> like i've been like that's interesting <laughs> apparently they just do it all day on venus too <laughs> really yeah. well nice. where are you going on vacation next year i don't know i'm gonna go to yes. venus and check Stop. it out <laughs> um, hey, guys we channeled someone who was on venus <laughs> oh, we did we did but he was resting. someone else did too if they're watching <laughs> He was Love resting. <laughs> I don't know if I have any. Yeah, okay, pal. <laughs> oh. Well, she also wanted to know if her current boyfriend is her twin flame. All right. So there's definitely like I like him. I like him a lot. I like his energy. Um, but I feel like there's definitely, if you look at the two and the two, these are mirror images of each other. This is like traditionally when you learn tarot, like this is like the wedding happy ending card. So there's definitely like some sort of soul union and the astral realm i know i've been seeing that for people recently it's like their there's souls a lot of happy are busy. endings on venus yeah a lot of happy endings on venus so yeah a lot of happy endings on venus look and at there that. we shift there we shift the conversation back to here we go again. i literally i turn into a 14 year old boy when i'm tired guys. seriously like i'd girls, also like to affirm worse. that ace of swords too oh girls are way worse yes oh yeah girls are oh, way yeah. worse than boys Probably. Let's, let's not fool ourselves, ladies. Mm -hmm. Divine feminine, here we come. <laughs> we back. We back. Oh, but I saw them dance. You know how I'd be seeing people dancing up in the astral? Yeah. It you looks told me fun. about that. I know. Damn bodies get in the way, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right, bro. <laughs> I'm not exactly getting twin flame, but I'm getting like possible soulmate. Because I do get the Ten of Cups. Oh. So I, I feel like it's a soulmate, but in the mix, though, I do have a seven of cups, which, I mean, could be her confusion that, you know, doubting herself, or it could literally be that there might, it might be more like soulmate type of energy. I feel like, um, queen of swords, queen of swords is clarity. It could be, you could be keeping it from her too. I don't know. With that Ten of Cups, too. Is she supposed to know yet if that's who yeah, he is? I don't, I don't feel like she's supposed to know right now. No, I, I feel like, and I, with a Seven of Cups being all, like, confusion, like, could be, maybe not, maybe, you know, I, I don't know. I'm definitely picking up past life connection, though. I feel like this person came in her life really quickly. Sometimes the spreads are a little confusing at times, especially when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah. And there's some I, stuff that we can't know right now. Like they just, and that's been, and I, well, both the three of us can probably attest to this because when we do our, when we divine for each other, like off camera, there's a lot of stuff that the universe is like, no, we're not going to tell you now. Be patient. Be Just breathe. How many times have they told us to breathe? You know, like. Well, during my, I won't say who. We were channeling through my BQH, but somebody told Bryce, be patient. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> be patient. We know. That we four know. of wands card for me is the feed me grapes and tell me it's real card because I'm not patient. So <laughs> also, <laughs> also another shirt on the list of shirts. Yeah. <laughs> feed me grapes and tell me it's real. Yes, right. All right. So this is a, probably an important question that um Spring Band Mama asked. And um I don't know if we should, we probably pull cards unless, but I definitely want to talk about it. Um, can we have more information about Jesus coming back as a woman, please? Where did you hear that? What is the basis for that? Super interesting and exciting. Please give us more. 
Uh, I don't believe Yahshua or Mary is back yet. Mary Magdalene. I don't either. I, I at first did. Now I don't. Um, I think here? they are coming back, but not quite yeah. yet. Their In the parents, near future, yes. Their parents are here? They're coming. Yeah, look, that could be a womb. Like if I'm looking at water. Coming in. Portal. Coming movement. In. Yeah, water. And so, so yeah, this so, guys, this goes back to the fact that we are not in the apocalypse. I don't believe that we're ooh, what's that mean? Don't trust, don't trust anything unless unless it's in your knowing. Don't I would say almost like a lot got distorted. That's yeah. just distortion energy if we're looking at it. It could have gotten distorted. I just Yeah. I don't so, know. I don't, I don't think that know. in my my knowing, in my personal opinion, from my research and looking at timelines. I do not believe that Yahshua, or as he's called Jesus, or the Magdalene, because they have to come together, guys. As Stephanie said, the Alpha and the Omega, they have to come together. Divine masculine, divine feminine, they have to be together to make that Christ consciousness. They are not here yet in physical human 3D form. I guess they'll be coming in 4D form. But they are spiritually here with us, but they are not here on the planet walking around in flannel shirts right now. Right? They're not here. Um, their parents, we believe, are here because that is one thing we're also finding too. We've talked about the Laren group being the Christ consciousness group. They are two entities of a group. All right. You said this one time, Taylor, about someone that asked about their child being a high vibrational. Like it takes a high vibrational parent, woman, even not just the egg, but also the sperm to be able to portal through. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's, it's hard to I'm carry trying. a high vibrational child. Like I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know, but I'm, that's what I've heard. <laughs> I, I, yeah, no, I've never. Well, Stephanie, Stephanie's the only one of us that's actually birthed child. So um. listen, I was nauseous. Yep. And I threw up on an average three times a day for eight out of the nine months, including Ooh. the day of birth. I knew he was going to be a little shit right from day one. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, I, but I love him to pieces. I love him to pieces. He's like, you know, my son has taught me a lot in life. And, he's funny. Um, oh, he's funny. He's he funny. is so funny. He just so had a he birthday. Does, he did just have a birthday. The big one five. I he's can't believe five. I have <laughs> a 15 year old. Um, and I promise you guys, I'm not as young as I might look. Please lucky to have you, but with, but it is as, as she's saying, like, it, can you imagine being pre for the women out there? Can you imagine being pregnant with Yahshua or the Magdalene? Cause they're both equal, right? We know that now they're equally the Christ consciousness. They're both from the Lyran group, the house of David, house of Judah, the house of the lion. Right. So, and then could you imagine being the parents of a four-year-old Magdalene or a four-year-old Yahshua having to like teach them? Well, having to rein them, them in too. Um, yeah. there are missing gospels of Yahshua's childhood, like having to like rein him in and like teach him how to control his own abilities. So, yeah. so with that being said, having the Magdalene or Yahshua back, it's going to take more of a process. The parents are also going to have to, I believe the parents are going to have to know who, who they are and are going to have to like work through that as well. And I don't think that we need part of the understanding of the Christ consciousness as we ascend we have to learn how to do that ourselves, which is what Yahshua taught, which is what Mary taught is that light inside of you. And so I don't think that they're going to be coming on the earth plane until we've already gone through that, that gate. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Like, do y'all want to pull, pull, pull cards on that or, or. Wasn't I'll the question though too, like Yashua being a woman and everything? Yes. Like oh, and that's and I'm gonna say that too. Yashua does not need to be a woman. Um, Magdalene does not need to be a man. That's that's no. Ma the Magdalene is divine feminine, the Yashua is divine masculine. They're equal, and that's who they are. They're equal. So oh. yeah. Got thrown Spirit was sassy there. Do you think they're ready? Like, it's all, sorry, it's so weird. I feel like, like, they're ready to enter for the Aquarian age. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There are going to be a rebirthing card. They're ready? I think they're ready, too. I think we're all ready. <laughs> Lyran energy. Oh, beautiful energy. Thank you. I like that strength card. Oh, my God. Look what I got, too. The death card as well. So rebirthing of the Lyran. 
That's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Um, the sun, which or the, the light, you can't make this, this crap up. I mean, yeah. this is when I get really excited about read cards because I'm pulling the cards and I'm like, holy crap. Um, let's see. And another thing too, like, especially thinking about the Magdalene, because she's, I feel like she's really, yeah, justice there. I think the Magdalene's getting her justice, isn't she? Um, yes, you know, the, the you know, return of the divine feminine. The feminine. So, like, why does the Magdalene have to come back as a man? Isn't she good enough as a woman? Like, isn't that, like, cabal thinking to think that, oh, now she has to be a man to be good enough? Like, no. Does Joshua have to be a woman? He's good enough as the divine masculine. Well, you're not going to know everything, I'm guys. Know. And the other thing Bryce said that I feel like really, really was resonating with me was the aspect of both of them coming into unison. That's how we got the feminist movement distorted. That'd be a negative thinking of the feminine everything got distorted so think about that it's all about the energies and the separation of the twin flame when these twin flames are separated they grow and they learn from karmics they also learn from experiences and when they come together they're coming together because they're whole because they've they've done what they needed to do they're whole they don't look for each other or need each other but they feel each other and once you get to this place of wholeness that's when the mag magnet happens right so we can go our whole lives searching for a twin flame but that will not come online until whole does that make sense i hope i gave that justice because that's just something that i felt makes a lot of sense okay makes good. A and lot we, of sense. No, we know that like the twin flame theme is really big for this great awakening for the time we're in right now because all these partnerships are coming back together again or yeah, so unions, yeah. are yeah. activating um but you think and we know that the, the dark players are trying to like separate that because that's matt that's powerful so you think about that from a logical standpoint we know that we're in the middle of a battle right now that would be almost dumb for Yashua and magdalene to be here now yeah because they could be taken out so quickly by the way i would like to mention that i met I, I got what I wanted. I had a BQH session. I did a work with both of them. And one is a very masculine energy woman. And the other one is a very feminine energy woman. And they are twenties. And that was so dope because even the, the woman who resonates more masculine, she said on other planets, I don't think I've ever been a feminine before. She's like, I had to come down as feminine for this. Cause this is what oh, was wow. available to me. Yeah. I thought that was crazy. So That's she's so divine crazy. masculine in a woman's body, but yeah. she's not normally a woman. She normally incarnates at a high, high, high dimension of either being asexual, which guys, I'm not talking about asexual that they distorted down here. I'm talking about literally a high dimensional being, or she did man, and now she had to come in as a woman. So it's that I did want to affirm that, that I, anything is freaking possible at this yeah, point. Absolutely. Anything's possible. Yeah. All right. So guys, so this is going to be our last question for the evening. Um, at, at the beginning of next week, I will post, um, on the community board for you to ask more questions. So if we didn't get your question, if we missed it, then just ask it again. As I said in the beginning, under the next, uh, message on the community board on my channel, Esoteric Atlanta. So this is from Mary, uh, or Seki. I believe that's how you say your last name. My question is, I've never really believed in God, so to speak. And I have been learning more through all of you, but I have a daughter with several palsy that has the mind of a 10 year old. She lived in a group home. She is 37. They told me if she didn't get the, she would lose her house. So I called their bluff and moved her home and had to quit my job. I know she has her own journey, but she doesn't understand any of this. How do I help her? She is also a RAPE victim. I hired a woman to take care of her so I could work. Well, you guess what? She drugged her. And forced her to have a with her. Oh. I have to be careful what I say, guys. That's rough. That's rough. That's really rough. Wow, Mary. Oh. That's crazy. Oh, I'm sorry, Mary. Yeah. Now the drugs they have her on are, are so bad. And I'm currently uh, taking them away. But it's, it has caused brain damage. And I swear there are people in her head now. Um, I do the Tamara cancel, cancel trick. But again, she doesn't get it. How do I help her? Or can I even? And I find it hard to give up. And I will never leave her to fend on our own without guidance ever. I feel very alone in my truth. And now I'm very isolated due to cannot leave much. And I sure found out who my friends are. Yeah. Can the cards give a little uh, insight? Thank you very much. Mary, Mary you are rough. doing so much more than you know, even energetically, even just, it's like you have, it's almost like I'm hearing like you have no idea what you're doing. So don't think that you're not 
doing enough or that you can't help because like you are, you are helping and things are going to change for you very, very soon. And I like, I know you're probably heard that. I know you probably like, I'm sorry, my light language wants to come in. I just, I'm a little embarrassed, but I feel like I should you, like, if you want to, I think I love your light language. So do I. And they just want her to know how loved they are and that the healing will come and the healing of the trauma too. It's not only like the physical healing that's going to be offered. It's like the healing of the trauma too. It's all going to go away. And I promise, like, I promise, like that's, that's their message. They, they promise that the, the trauma goes with the, with the physical healing too. Well, that was gorgeous, by the way. Anytime you want to speak light language, Taylor, you're absolutely yeah. Right. I love it. It's so, it's so embarrassing sometimes because no, it it's, it's like beautiful. it takes over my throat. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's it's so. I mean, yeah. Stephanie and I have been around it a lot now, and it's it's just so powerful. I just want to cry for her, not like because of like she's not a victim and she doesn't, but I can feel it's her like lot. soul. I can feel like it's I feel like she's like, please help, please help, like. And I know that feeling, yeah, yeah. not on her level, but I know what it's like to have a child with ABUSC in a facility because my son was physically, mentally, and emotionally abusc in his school system. And um, if he was older, was still with his issues, he probably would have been forced into a group home too. Um, I want Mary to reach out to me though. Um, so Mary, if you can put my email in the, the description box too, cause, um, I have a couple of things that I could probably share with her maybe to help. Cause I know a lot about like that, that <sighs> what parents go through and everything like that with, um, kids on disabilities and stuff like that. And I also worked in the mental health, um, department. It is probably, um, more corrupt than most departments in the medical field. And, um, my cards are saying she's going to be healed. Mine too. <laughs> Mine too. I feel like she, she came in with this agreement. So, and that's hard to fathom. And it's hard to understand in our 3D selves that we are as human beings. But um, she decided to be super brave in her soul energy and come down here and incarnate with these ailments. But she is this queen of wands, super intuitive. You might not. Mary, you might not see that, um, but she is very, very intuitive. I, I'm picking up even very spiritual. Um, and then we have the three of wands, um, which I feel like is like to the future. She is going to be healed. So we have the ace of pentacles. So that's like a physical healing. But I feel like this is just saying keep loving her. Keep showing all, like open your heart chakra to her. Just keep doing what you're doing. You're doing amazing. And then there will be balance and security with that four of pentacles and she'll be okay going forward. She probably can't acclimate to, to third density as well. Many people who are from high dimensional places cannot acclimate and calibrate their bodies. That's why I've always been in a lot of pain. Um, a lot of us have like, we don't feel like we fit in in this world. We feel awkward or um, we have medical issues, like beyond medical issues, beyond medical issues. And it's not anything we did wrong. We didn't abuse our, our ABUSC ourselves, but um, our bodies are having a hard time calibrating to this third polarized density. It's very, very difficult. Thank you for All saying that. Pain. I feel like that's so important that you just said that because there's a lot of things that we think are like wrong with us. And this goes with mental health too. Of course, there's a lot of things that we think are wrong with us, but there's not, there's nothing. The wrong most with us. We spiritual just people in. are schizophrenic. That's very true. Why do they hear voices? Because they have an open antenna. Yeah. Unfortunately, the dark likes to sometimes come in 
and yeah. take over that. And that's why spiritual hygiene is so important. That's I was telling the girls this. I've taken spiritual hygiene classes from like a psychic, and I was taught because of my entity attacks. I was taught how to remove like entities, clean my aura, all that stuff. But I was never taught that people could take away your free will or attempt to because they can't touch us. Heard, but like yeah. try and take away your energy or feed off your energy. I knew about like energy vampirism, like when you're an empath and you like feel other people's stuff. A lot of people know what I'm talking about, but I'm talking about like what's been going on with like the dark cult and the spell casting, anything taking away free will. Spiritual hygiene is so important. I hope going forward, like spiritual hygiene will be something that'll be more addressed too. Like you said, coming into the channel, but I, I also got, as I heard it, like, as the world turns, I know that's like a pirates thing. I saw like pirates of Caribbean in my head, which is so weird, but is that one of the movies? Is that why I saw that? Soap opera. It's just soap opera. So, Oh my God. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know that. Uh, but as the world turns is what I heard. And I also got the three of wands, like stuffed it and look at that, like cloaked and protected onto the next. Yeah. It's, it's about to everything. Oh, I just Everything heard something. Change. Yeah, tell me. You said cloaked. She's so cloaked. So I almost feel like she had to come in with this uh, medical ailment because if she was without it, she'd be a big fat target for the dark side. Does that make sense? Like it is a cloaking device. Like I'm seeing a two of swords in my head right now. Dang, you're good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Mary, please reach out. And I was thinking she could probably reach out to both of you. Could I leave both of your contacts for Mary? Yes, because that's absolutely. a lot, girl. Like, yeah, she needs I mean, someone to talk to. And just I, leaving that I comment my heart. And you are one, Mary, I'm just going to say this. You are one badass for being able to handle this. Yeah. Because when I was reading your comment, I was like, holy crap. Like, that's a lot. And, um, vindicated. I just heard vindicated. Yeah. And I want to validate that too, for you. Like, that's a fucking lot girl. Like, and I know you said in your comment that you said you learned who your friends are, but and I know we don't know you personally in our lives, but we're your friends too. And yes. so yeah. um, family friends. Out. Yeah. Reach out, um, to us and we can help. Maybe we can give you a little extra help and support in whatever way possible just to help you get through this. Because I, I do think it, the, this, the switcheroo is going to be coming soon. So, but but God bless you both, you and your daughter, for for fighting this fight with us. Because holy crap! So, stay strong. What an interesting episode this has been, ladies. We talked about talking about start off talking about Britney Spears and rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> People have me need to relax, have a sense of humor about some memes. Oh my lord! Then it turned into sex jokes <laughs> inadvertently. <sighs> Still it's want to go to Venus. <laughs> you, know that, you know that meme where it's the dog like <laughs> burning in the building and he's looking up from his newspaper and stuff and he's fine. like, this is fine. <laughs> That's fine. literally the earth fine. in us right now. This is fine. <laughs> so um, this is probably, and then we ended up with that very, very deep personal question. And so I, what a roller coaster this has been on. And we love all you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for trusting us, uh, especially Stephanie and Taylor. I'm just the narrator, but for trusting them with your um, questions. And um, we all, we all are family. And I'm thinking, and oh, I just had an orb go by. Oh, I'm thinking you guys um, that in the new world, I shouldn't say new world, the new earth will be so into our intuition. We're not even going to need these, are we? No, it's, it's, a, it's our, okay. Let me just uh, clarify for all y'all. This is a tool that none of us, including out there need. But if you feel like you like the confirmation, the affirmation, you feel drawn to it, do it. Why the heck not? Why not? Why not hone up on your skills? But you guys are all capable of doing this and accessing the information on your own. It's my favorite thing in the world to tell people, but like, look at my underlying energy today. This is just for today. Like, yes. Also this goes, Stephanie pulled initiation by water before we even started. Also, we have the water bear coming in, but it's interesting because it's the stars also could be off world, but it's really feeling like the new Aquarian energy actually going into this new way of being. And we're starting to see that. And that's why it looks like garbage out there. That's why we feel it in our bodies is because of the collective energy too. Yes. I also have another perspective on that too. Tell me girl. What if those seriously like off worlders traveling off worlders coming here? Ooh, daddy likey. They are here. Well, I know that, but well, like, <laughs> like without the cloaking, Without cloaking. Be like, there's, there's more movement for you, Steph. Next. Literally, I stood outside taking my dogs outside. 
I was so tired of the shit show. And I'm like, SOS off-worlders, come get me now. Bring me to <laughs> land. Guys, I thought I was going to get beamed up last night. I was nauseous. I, I'm sure other people are going through symptoms and stuff too. I was nauseous, lightheaded. I, I texted Steph. I said, girl, I might pass out. She's like, sit down. I'm like, it's fine. This is fine. <laughs> Literally burning. Like, I don't want to deal fine. with a fainting girl like in front of me. But if you faint 2,000 miles away from me, you're shit out of luck. <laughs> you can't help me from that far? Come on. Astro travel, over. right? I've been learning that I know how to astro travel. I astro travel. Listen, if I, I like, can find a portal to where I'm, <laughs> I'm busy. Florida, I'm busy. I'll be in that portal. <laughs> well, I literally and, didn't I, like okay. text you guys and I was like, um, I went somewhere last night and <laughs> I told you guys and I was like, can you check on your boards? I think I traveled. <laughs> you busy. I'm just pulling a quick traveling card for the for uh, everybody. I would absolutely love that. Thank you. Because I want to I want to listen to <laughs> forgiveness. Oh Let's all just give each other like a hug. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you for all the lessons, even the crappy ones that feel like garbage cans. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to us. We yeah. forgive ourselves too. We forgive ourselves. Going it's forward, okay. Going forward to lift the vibrational frequency, it's going to take a lot of this. And uh, regardless of what, how crappy the Bible is, as far as we know, I do agree with forgiveness is very, very essential. Now, it doesn't mean you have to go to that person and you yes. have to Thank say, you. oh, I forgive you. No, it's a heart shocker thing. It's, it's a, it heals. It's a healing thing. And it's a healing thing specifically actually for you, but you it also helps the other person too. And it's like cutting off any bad juju, I guess you want to say. Oh, planetary Hard guardian. One. We're talking about oh, the off world here, so. Funny. And I just want to show everybody, this is the back of the cards. The um, These are the Pleiadian Oracle. I just got them. They're pretty. They're beautiful. Forgiveness is a hard. It's hard. That's a hard one for me. Especially yeah. when there has never, and there's not going to be, or maybe not ever going to be an apology. A lot of people are probably learning that though, Bryce. Like there's these people that we have spoken our truth to that we've tried to help. And, and not everyone's going to listen to us. And we have to get to this point of acceptance and, and us too. Stephanie made a huge point. This is something that I always loved to teach back in the day was like, when you forgive someone, you don't have to go and text them like Steph said, but by you doing that and putting that energy out there, you're cutting off their power supply to you. It's a, it's a detachment and it's like, it's okay. I forgive you, but I don't want to put my energy into that anymore or I have boundaries and I don't want to, I don't want to put my energy into that friend person or place anymore. Right. Well, when you hold a grudge too, you're giving that person power over yeah, you. Yeah. It's you drinking. Exactly. Uh, you got to cut that. To to die. It yeah. has nothing to do. You know, we're told, Oh, be buddy, buddy again. It has nothing to do with that. It's you're healing yourself. That's right. You're allowing the spirit realm to also heal you too. If you need a little assistance, because forgiveness is a very tough thing to do. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. I pulled that card. So that is interesting. You pulled that card. All right, ladies. Yeah. So again, everybody, I will be putting up the post at the beginning of the week for next week's video. Maybe we can talk more about spiritual hygiene next week. Cause that seems to be a very yeah. important topic. I like that. <laughs> talk about let us know guys down in the description box below i know we've spoken a little bit about it but i know a little bit that about that as well just from personal um just from my studies of yoga and that spiritual world as well there there is a south show there's a cleanliness that goes deeper than just like your basic hygiene so all right lady ladies i can't speak i can't speak ladies oh, ladies in a long day <laughs> it's gonna be okay you know i just gonna be okay. this. i think that would make it better but um just got a song download bob marley every little thing oh my god whatever whenever okay so i whenever i'd be like in the past whenever i'd be like in a bad place mentally I, every time like i needed a sign from god three little birds would come on the radio always so that song so because i'm stronger <laughs> than yesterday, yesterday. Now it's nothing but book my way. <laughs> Here's the thing, guys. Let us know in the comment section below. If you want Taylor and Stephanie to learn one of the choreogra the choreo choreographed dances of Britney Spears and perform it for you guys. Girl. Let's take a vote and see how Done. they do. Done. <laughs> what are we asking for here, guys? <laughs> What's the heart one? Listen, oh, you girl, you're good. good. She knows it. I know we can do bye bye bye. I can do bye bye bye. That's for Backstreet Boys. 
That's insane, Connie. Sorry. I had a crush on Lance Bass, and he is now gay. So, yeah, way to go. Listen, I had, <laughs> I think it was Jay Tibbs first, and then I went to Joey Fatone. You <laughs> would. Did I ever tell you guys about my Joey Fatone dream? He shape shifted in my. I'll tell you guys. I'll tell. I'll tell them next week. Okay, but I'll next tell week, you guys. But I'll tell them next, next week. week. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Yeah. I've enjoyed. I've actually enjoyed this episode because I feel like <laughs> too, no pretense. I truly needed a laugh. This is seriously <laughs> what it's like. A little bit more f bombs, but this is seriously what it's like off camera too. So, and I thank you guys for hanging in with us. You're all our friends. We're all family, and um, <laughs> the best is yet to come. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. What? <laughs>